Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back from the holidays. We hope you all had a wonderful holiday season. We know we did. Well rested. Well rested. Very Not well really. rested. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> In general, people are still resting, as you can see from the emptiness of the <laughs> store today. Uh, but uh, there, here is this week's uh, Last Week in Gaming, um, brought to you by Shea Geeks, your one-stop shop for everything board games and card games, which is where we're at right now. Right here. Final Fantasy XV. Uh, we're starting our news this week with Final Fantasy XV. Final it Fantasy XV was finally released in 2016. Yes. Because we're now 2017. Yes. And it's last year already. Old news. It's old news it's old now. News, yeah. It's a year old now, right? <laughs> Um, and um, Hajime Tabata, the director for Final Fantasy XV, made an announcement. Uh, he was very proud. He said, we were able to deliver Final Fantasy XV to everyone at long last. Um, and then he goes on to say, uh, we were able to, uh, we, the Final Fantasy XV team, were able to achieve these things because of the warm and strong support of our fans. I have decided that 2017 is a year of giving back to everyone for their kindness and then he goes on to say that there are many players enjoying ff15 in various ways and nothing makes us happier than this so to provide a long lasting and even more enjoyable experience with ff15 for everyone we will continue to up the game uh, update the game and release dlc Paid which is freaking DLC awesome though? obviously well yes and potentially no uh from what i've understanding is they just want to keep making content for the game. I mean, that's pretty cool. I could see... I, I've enjoyed the game though, so far. I think I've got 40-something hours in on it. Um, but, like, I'm taking my sweet-ass time. I'm not very far, and I'm 42 <laughs> hours in, so... That's because you're doing all of the side stuff, I'm doing all too. the side stuff and stuff. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, just the concept of them giving us more to do in the game. I'm, I'm not going to spit on that. Well, how did we, or how did you react if you ever played it, uh, the uh, expansions, like, for uh, Final Fantasy XIII? Like, how did you feel about those expansions? Uh, you mean, the like, the second and third installments? Uh, uh, f my hate for Final Fantasy XIII 2 actually got me a job at Square Enix, ironically. Because <laughs> I, I dissed it during the interview, forgetting that it was made by Square Enix for like a split second. Forgetting where I was. And they were like, that's a ballsy s statement to make in a Square Enix interview. And I was like, <gasps> <laughs> oh shit. I <laughs> uh, didn't like it. Uh, Lightning Returns was pretty good though. I heard it was pretty good. I'll give, I'll give them that. Lightning Returns was interesting. So, so these DLCs, I doubt they're going to be free because it's very much not in the square model to give free stuff. Honestly, dude, if they're saying they're going to keep making stuff, just get the $30 uh, season pass. Season pass. So we're back to the $110 game. But at this point, already the game, I've got 42 I, I, I hours. Look, after Call of Duty came out with 110, I can't criticize. Yeah, Square. but look, after I, I've, I've got 42 hours clocked in, I'm going to hit at least 100. Right now, I pay $2 an hour to play this game. And I think that's pretty damn good return so far. You know, once I hit 80, I'll have paid a dollar an hour to play the game. And that's totally worth it for a game that great. I'll be honest, like, it's, I haven't given a uh, single shit about Final Fantasy in a long fucking time. Oh, I know. In a long time. I, I've made that very abundantly clear to everyone. Uh, Final Fantasy 15, though, it's the first one in a long time that, it, like, I mean, I, I got a PS4 in part due to the fact that I want to play that game. So that's what they it's wanted. A fair, that, it's a fair idea. That was their whole marketing goal right from the start when they were making this game. Like all the promotion, the marketing that went behind it was to get people like you who are, you know, like long term or uh, people that just didn't stop playing, uh, who did stop playing, I should say, to, to get to get back, back into up. it. Exactly. The first thing you see actually when you turn it on is a uh, Final Fantasy game for old fans and new. Mm. OK, which is great. But, I still don't like the fact there are B-boys running around. The desert. Motley crew. You can let us know what you guys think down comments below. Comments below. Hey everybody, how's it going? I just shot off here. I'm hyper, hyper confused. So, <laughs> where'd you come from, Lewis? I don't know. Poof. <laughs> I just poofed here. He poofed here. Okay. I just poofed here. So, so uh, interesting little tidbit here. Uh, did you guys know that uh, our wonderful, uh, I guess. Uh, 
not our friend, but I guess the world's friend, Ariana Grande. The world's friend, world's Ariana friend? Grande. Everybody seems to love Ariana Grande, especially in Japan. I don't know if you guys knew that. She's a big deal in Japan. Oh, right? yeah, she is a yeah. huge She's deal like the shit in Japan. So right? much so that what? So much so that Square Enix decided to throw, I don't know if she, they threw her in or she asked for it, but she <laughs> decided to just get in there. Uh, they decided to get put her in a Final Fantasy game. They did actually. Uh, Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. Right? That's correct. For those who don't know what Brave Exvius is, it's a mobile game where you basically turn base and uh, collect uh, characters yeah. from previous Final Fantasy games. Yeah. So they did not hold my attention for a little bit. No? no. Well, yeah, they held my attention for a little for, bit yeah. and then I lost interest. Yeah. Enough. And then, and, then, and, then, and then I started playing that game you got me in and I, you know, I realized and then you got me into the other one and then into the other one and then I realized man these games are so similar the only difference they have is the actual playing mechanics that's right well I would hope so otherwise why? <laughs> but <laughs> I you're playing the same game I yes digress. we digress so the point is that they decided to put her in the game as a character which is a Viera, I believe. Uh, the, from, the bunny people the bunny people from Final Fantasy 12 Viera. from the Eva Lise, uh uh, world, Ivalice, Ivalice. I remember seeing her character. Tomato, looks, potato. Uh, very um, SNME. Yeah. Well, uh, the, in general, actually, the the characters, like the uh, the people from that race in that kind of world of Final Fantasy, they're very masochist. They look very like they're very leather bound or very like they'll have masks and like stuff like that. It's just it's part of the it's culture, cult I yeah, guess. It's their culture. I think they're all female, actually. Yeah, except she decided not to go leather and she went full on PVC. So, <laughs> hey, why not? I'm not gonna judge. When I go to the Starbucks, I order my coffee at Grande. <laughs> <laughs> but that joke has been played out so much. Uh, but yeah, what do you guys think about that? Uh, just having her in a Final Fantasy game? I think it's cool having the celebrities inside of a game is just um, cool. I mean, it's cool. It's just as cool as seeing Norman Reedus inside of uh, Hideo Kojima's new game and like seeing, you know, it's just like, it's a shout out. It's Guillermo. Or Kevin Costner in uh, seeing Call Guillermo, of Duty. You know? Kevin Costner in Call of Duty. Kevin Costner in Call of Duty. Or uh, Viggo Mortensen. Uh, no, not Viggo Mortensen. What am I saying? Milk Milkinson? Where is it? What? <laughs> it's Mike Milkinson. Hans, Milkinson. Hans Milkinson. Hans Hans Mikkelsen. Yeah, Hannibal. We'll, we'll put it right here, the correct name, <laughs> before we butcher it further. Uh, or what's, what's another celebrity? Um, oh, yeah. There's all kinds of stuff. John Kit Harrington. That's what I was John thinking Snow. of. That's Where? Right. Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And which one? The new one? The new yeah, one. New one. In space. <laughs> so, hello, guys. Hey. Um, you guys know how I like to talk a lot about Early Dangerous? No. no. Explain. What do you mean you talk about it? Well, whenever there's something uh, newsworthy about Elite Dangerous, I make the point to bring it out because I'm just that enthralled by the game. Just that enthralled. Even though I don't play it that often anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very it's a very grindy game, okay? But there's not much of anything going on in that out. game, right? There's one thing that that Frontier, the little person, Elite Dangerous, have been doing pretty good since they released the game. It's hinting at things that are going to happen in the universe. Uh, a couple of uh, months ago or maybe more than a couple months ago, they started, uh, not, they, not that they did, but, you know, people started finding these weird uh, probes just floating in space and they had no clue where they came from. And then you would find uh, like that if you pointed your camera at a certain point in the galaxy, you would hear like this, imagine if you had a Geiger counter with you, mm -hmm. like yeah. the radiation, and yeah. you were like, well, that wasn't there before. You know, it's, 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 it sounds like, you know, like... Uh, background noise. Yeah, yeah, like background noise. Yeah. But that background noise wasn't there. Ah. And then you find planets with weird uh, kind of mushroom-type structures and artifacts lying everywhere. And uh, people were starting to put the pieces together and they realized that, oh, you know what's happening? Is that the alien race that is part of the elite world, the elite universe, is finally showing their ugly asses in the world. Their ugly asses. Their but ugly wait, asses. they always know that it was there? The thing is that Targoids, that's the name of the race, they're always been in every other Elite Dangerous game except in, well, in, other, in every Elite game except in Elite Dangerous. They were not there from the beginning and people were like, well, where are the Targoids? Well, guess what happened? What happened? what happened? Someone was flying in space. His name is uh, Commander D.P. Sayer. I hope I say that right. Uh, he was just flying through hyperspace, 
get into another uh, star system. I, yeah, I saw the video of this. See. And uh, right in the middle of his, uh, his, jump, his jump, there's like this sort of anomaly and he gets pulled out, just like if you were uh, you know, intercepted. And uh, someone else got intercepted at the same time. And then uh, and his, all, all his, his things turned off, right? Yeah, well, his, his ship completely turned off. And then you just see this massive, huge alien ship just flying around from one side. It scanned them too, I believe. Yeah, something they like that. They, they said that, that they're thinking that there was like a, this yellow bright light that yeah. showed up from the from the alien once it showed up mm -hmm. in, in his face. And they think that they're, they scanned him. And then just the, the ship flew away. He tried to follow him, but he, he jumped. And I'm imagining he didn't have a, a wake scanner because when you uh, make a jump on the... On the faster than light, you leave a wake that you can trace to see where the ship went. Well, wasn't this game like completely based around heat? So that if they can't measure the heat signature of this alien object... The thing is, the thing is that by the moment the alien is with you, you don't have any measuring tools. Your, 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 your ship is completely turned off. Uh, so like, the only thing you have is uh, life support. That's all. And least. by the moment you turn ships, uh, your ship turns back on, you try to chase the thing and the thing just jumps away i see I, I think it's a pretty cool development though in that i i game. personally love it yeah like, and it's it's you know adding and the way they did it too with the mystery and like you know giving clues until they reveal the ship like i think it's pretty cool the way they did it now it's now it's gonna be how they take it i mean though. they've been they've been doing the whole art thing for a while now like uh back in uh gamescon i believe last year they had this video where uh, they introduced a lot of ships destroyed, and there was in, in between the frames they found this disc, and they managed to trace information from that disc to a specific, um, a specific uh, cluster of stars, and that's where they found the, these uh, planet likes, planet wow. with uh, the artifacts. It's if you guys have encountered any aliens in Lead Dangerous, let us know. All right, so to finish off this week's last week in gaming, we thought we would uh, talk about YouTube a little bit. You show up here. Uh, <laughs> how did you end up over here? I don't know. <laughs> it's the magic of editing. Um, so earlier this week, um, YouTube got an exclusive broadcast deal with ESL's Pro League, uh, and that they are now exclusive to YouTube, um, thanks to an agreement between the WESA and YouTube Gaming. Uh, so season five of ESL Pro League. Uh, we'll begin on February 7th and we'll broadcast Tuesday through Thursday on ESL's YouTube channel. Oh, wow. That's uh, that's kind of big news. That's huge news. Uh, that's YouTube is starting to fight for ground. That's is what that news. means. Well, I'm pretty I'm pretty honestly, I'm, I'm excited up to hear that because that means YouTube is going to start to uh, pull some weight on Twitch. Yeah. And they're going to start people are going to start looking at YouTube as more of a serious uh, streaming platform, which would be nice. I guess. I, I, I don't think it's going to hold much weight, honestly. I think okay. Twitch is going to lock down LCS. Uh, they're going to lock down the Korean League, and those two are huge. Uh, so I, I, I think like I, it, it's a nice win right now for YouTube, yeah. but Twitch is going to do their own move and I think it's going to be a lot bigger sure but I, it, it, it's also not the first time YouTube's done this back in November um, they had MLG Las Vegas streaming exclusively on YouTube for that month yeah and how many people watched it I couldn't tell you yeah, I, I, I didn't, didn't watch, watch it. it exactly that's what <laughs> I'm saying I didn't, even, I didn't even know that was going on exactly so so you know what I'm saying like it, it's a nice win for now but Twitch is going to fire back, and when Twitch fire is back, it's... I, I think Twitch is ultimately going to win out the stream war unless Facebook gets into the arena, and if Facebook gets into the arena, Facebook's going to... I'm not sure about that. Uh, I'm not sure. entirely sure, but, you know, I mean, what other, what, other, um, what other companies could possibly side with, like, you know, made the jump? We're talking about LCS, but LCS is not the only other league around there. Well, uh, I mean, from what I from what I've seen, uh, apparently, you know, the e the ESL Pro League recently won the players' votes uh, over the North America's Professional Esports Association, uh, meaning that this and ECS will be the two leagues where fans can watch North American teams. So, for the North American fan base, um, but in which game? The league. The league it includes a lot of games. It's a bunch of games. So it's like all Halo, Counter Strike. 
uh, Call of Duty, Battlefield. Oh, thank God. I watch so much of those. Well, you don't, yeah, but, the, but you a lot don't. of people do. Yeah. Right. There's like a shit ton of people that watch all those things. Like, it's, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable it's the news. amount of people that watch ESL. It's definitely good news for YouTube. Uh, with Game Changer remains to be seen, right? Uh, because if this leads to more, like, if they go, my God, our experience with YouTube was fantastic. Other people will be far more on board to do it. So you could have Blizzard, Blizzard yeah, jumping on on on, on you the YouTube. Could, you could. You, you never know. Uh, what we do know is that YouTube is gonna have to pull out all the stops to make sure that. This well, they works have the I, I, they have the buying power over Twitch. I think. Oh, totally. Like with Google well, back. Well, Google. Dude, well, it's Google, Google. Yeah, I guess. Like if they, you think they about have it like the buying that, power. Yes. So I mean, they could buy out every. Amazon contract. is no joke, though, man. Amazon is no, no. joke. They're right. worth more than Walmart now. Uh, like they're the that. second largest retailer in the world. Yeah. Behind Which Alibaba. Ridiculous. Alibaba? Alibaba. Yeah. That's, that's the largest Alibaba. that's the largest retailer in the world. Largest retail largest online retailer. Well largest retailer period in yeah. the world is it's Alibaba. Alibaba. Yeah. I never heard about Alibaba before. If you want to order something and get it in three months, you go to Alibaba. <laughs> you get it in three months, but it costs you fifteen cents. So uh, let oh. us know. <laughs> that place. Yes. Well, let yeah, us know what you guys that. think of this whole uh, deal that YouTube has struck. Oh, by the way, YouTube, you're awesome. Don't do anything bad to our videos. Nah, they haven't so far. We talked a lot of shit about them, so I think we're good. <laughs>